The hundreds of members of the Garland Senate clicked and clattered nervously as they each squatted in shallow pools in tiered rows around a central pond in a subterranean chamber lit with brightly glowing phosphorescent mushroom-like growths sprouting from nearly every exposed surface. This ancient chamber held their governing body for longer than they had writing to record what transpired in this ancient and hallowed space. They buzzed and muttered anxiously amongst themselves, some nervously nibbling at the glowing fungi with their long, flexible snouts. Others sponged themselves with brightly coloured bath sponges, bearing the colours of their respective regions, trying to soothe their frayed nerves. We demand knowledge and information, one of the Senate loudly demanded. A rippling of the central pool widened, and an elderly garland nearly twice the size of the already impressively massive senators rose. And you shall have it, the garland in the centre, nearly the size of an elephant, replied calmly. We await the arrival of Game Lord Balashare. He will have the knowledge, information, and more importantly, intelligence pertaining to these. He trailed off as he stared at the glowing screens submerged just below the surface of his pool. Who men? As of now, I only know what you do. Four standard months ago, a Hu-Man exploration vessel dropped out of hyperspace in the Vajavak system. It is home to a minor pod of our settlers, who engage mostly in subsistence agricultural endeavours, along with mineral extraction, the products of which are primarily used for trade, mostly with our own kind. I have never visited, but I hear that it is very nice. Is there Senator present? I am! An alluring feminine screech replied, causing all of the assembly to cock their ears at the incredibly seductive grating claws on a slate tablet rasp. Yeah, yes, the primary decider stammered as he looked at a truly spectacular Garlatha rising from her pool, the water glistening on her wide and generous flanks. He quietly snooted as he regained his composure. Damn, she was hot. Perhaps you know more than the rest of the assembled. Very little, I fear, she replied. The strange vessel appeared just outside the orbit of Sla, the seventh planet, and our largest gas giant, with the intent to obtain fuel before their exploration of our system began in earnest. We immediately made contact to determine who they were, and the nature of their intent. They had no knowledge of either our language or the galactic common communications protocols. However, they were able to indicate that they were both non-hostile and eager to communicate. It took several days, but we were able to create a translation protocol. Or more precisely, they were. Buzzing and clicking filled the chamber. That is an unprecedentedly short time for such an achievement, another senator trumpeted. Yes, the beautiful Vajavak senator replied, and a rather intimidating one at that. It was because of the fact that their ship contains a fully unlocked and unconstrained AI. She paused with a little smirk as she awaited the very alarmed reaction from the assembly, I can assure you that our reaction was much the same as yours, she buzz chuckled. It was quite the shock, but even more startling was the fact that these humans have had such AI for centuries and have never had any of the issues that many fear. In fact, they considered our concerns rather amusing. I have had the pleasure of conversing with their AI and found it very delightful and nothing but friendly, almost too friendly in fact, she added with another screeching laugh that caused all of the males to shiver with desire. Is this AI the reason for what happened next? The Prime Decider asked. No, Your Excellency, she replied. We took care to check. What happened was purely the result of the humans themselves. The rest, you know, she said with a little shrug. We are the humans' first contact with another sapient species, and they are absolutely delighted with discovering us. They are an incredibly friendly and open species, almost guileless, though I strongly suspect that taking them for fools or weaklings would be ill-advised a conclusion I made before our defeat. It is the open guilelessness of strength, not weakness. Was it as bad as it seems? You have viewed the recording of the live stream, have you not? She snorted ruefully. Oh, it was bad. We were completely pound. The chamber was consumed with anxious buzzes and clicks. Tactical analysis of the stream indicates that the assault team they used was equal to any team we possess, even the elite squads of Homeborough, which are among the best in the entire galaxy. And you are certain that this wasn't their AI? Absolutely, she replied. In fact, the AI claims that it is regularly defeated by their hell squad. Is, is this an invasion? An anxious senator squealed. Have they made any demands? No, 
the Vajvakan senator replied. In fact, I'm unsure they even know the full implications of what transpired, and I certainly was not going to tell them. Nervous laughter ensued. But then why did they bring such a fearsome assault team? Another senator asked. It would be prudent, another said. An exploration vessel should be properly armed in case of a challenge or attack. That is what I believed as well, the Varjakan senator replied. But I now honestly believe that is not the case. Then again, we have encountered such a simple guilelessness before, have we not? And how is their conduct after such a decisive victory? Nothing less than splendid, she replied. They are very gracious guests and, to be honest, wonderful company. They are mostly consumed with curiosity and hunger after knowledge and cultural exchange with the same rapaciousness as the Mukava crave conquest. This could be a prelude to a later attempt at conquest. As any reader of the art of victory would know, knowledge is the greatest weapon, a principle that we often use to great effect. However, again, my column tells me that this is honestly not the case. And what have we learned of them? A fair amount, she replied. They are a peaceful technology-aspected civilization, but their technology is somewhat behind galactic standard. However, this is offset by the truly incredibly short length of their civilization. Their most ancient written records are less than 10,000 years old, and they actually still have samples of not and cord data encryption. She smiled as the room was filled with screeches, clicks and buzzes. Yes, again, that was our reaction. They might be behind us, but their rate of progress is nothing less than frightening. Fortunately, that will be a problem for those who follow us. Saline soothe their tender orifices. On the opposing drip, we get to deal with those that precede their descendants, and that is problem enough. What else have you learned? A great deal about their current culture, she replied. They are very compatible with galactic civilization, and their arts are quite intriguing. Their wispy ephemeral alien forms are capable of dances that are nothing less than mesmerizing, and their music encompasses so many genres that it defies belief. Some are truly horrific. Others, utterly entrancing. I have samples of rhythmic percussion that are amazing, and they have a musical instrument that they call bagpipes that... Oh, we have to replicate those. It's a form of portable multitonal pneumatic organ and... Wow! I could listen to it all of my waking hours, and have nearly done so. And of their history? The Prime Decider asked. While often disregarded, the insights provided can be invaluable. That is more difficult, she replied. For all of their openness, they seem very guarded when any question concerning their history beyond the last two centuries is raised. They politely and conveniently remember that they aren't true ambassadors and defer such things for later. I suspect that there may be a key vulnerability there that we desperately need to discover, but prudence has led us not to pry. As the humans say, that is a question for later, and for Homeborough intelligence, of which the Game Lord is a part. I look forward to his findings as well. For roughly an hour, she politely and wearily answered questions, all of which were in the meticulously and exhaustively prepared notes that she and her people had disseminated to everyone present. She had to remind herself that this was their way, especially when stressed, and she would be right among them and their pointless clamouring if she was not so well informed. Eventually, she was spared more pointless questioning by a brief announcement that the Game Lord awaited the pleasure of their collective attention. The chamber fell completely silent as a lean, muscular Garlath wearily entered and approached the central pond. He dipped his forelegs respectfully. I greet you, Prime Decider he said with weary confidence. He turned to the Senate. I greet you, August Assembly, he said with weary graveness. We greet you, Game Lord, the Prime Decider said. Please join us and share. Let my waters unburden your frame and your spirits. I thank you, Prime Decider, the Game Lord said as he stepped into the central pool, a respectful distance from the Prime Decider. The Prime Decider dipped his long, flexible mouth snout into the water, took in a generous amount, and then sprayed it over the Game Lord in a customary greeting. The Game Lord sighed as he settled into the water, its buoyancy supporting the bulk of his massive body. After he settled, his head barely above the surface, he raised his snout. I have just returned from my trip to the human's homeworld, a quite lovely place if I do say so myself. It is quite agreeable to our species, 
and their world has a gravitational constant that is a delightful three-quarters of our own. Should we successfully establish relations, which is both quite possible and to our great benefit if we do so, I strongly expect it to become a very popular vacation destination. Their tropical islands in particular are quite appealing, and the world is covered in the most delightful lakes, streams, rivers, hot springs of many different mineral compositions, lakes and ponds. Their food is also quite agreeable to both our metabolisms and our palates. It will be possible to consume the local fare with only a few enzymes, and the precautions that any seasoned traveller is familiar. I absolutely adore their tinned fish and their preserved roe, particularly from a fish they call salmon. He wiggled his snout in a wry smile. Though I suspect such delights are not your primary interest? His smile faded. My primary mission was to make discreet observations concerning their offensive capacity. He let out a quietly sad, trumpeting sigh. Your Excellency, esteemed members of the Senate, the situation is not as bad as we feared. It is much, much worse. I dislike hyperbolic terms such as existential threat. But that is exactly what the humans represent, not only to us, but to the galaxy as a whole. He took a moment to compose himself as quiet murmurs filled the chamber. Long ago, the galaxy was consumed by war after war laying waste to entire systems. After the War of a Thousand Suns, the agreement was made to put an end to cycle after cycle of horror, with each side bringing forth a single company of champions to settle the issue. After that, wars were replaced by duels. Over time, duels became simulations or games, a word that translates quite well between our species. Humans, he once again took a moment to collect themselves. Humans don't just play games, they are gaming. Games utterly dominate their consciousnesses in a way that cannot be understood without... Well, it simply cannot be understood. It must be experienced, and even then... He shuddered and took a moment to spray water across his back. Humans love games like no other species we have ever encountered. It is bound to their very nature, and they crave them the same way we crave food, water, oxygen, even sex. Any concept you can imagine, they have made a game about it. If they do not have access to a game, they will make one, from anything. They make games out of stones, they make games out of pieces of paper, they make games, well, they just make games and engage in them compulsively. On the human ship on which I travelled, the various crews even made games out of their basic tasks, racing against one another to see who could complete them the quickest, with no reward other than the victory itself, or what they call bragging rights. They still actively play games that predate technology, and I have learned, especially among their spacefarers, that one can expect that any human has a gaming device on their person at any time, and is very skilled in its use. In particular, they seem very fond of pre-technological games involving a stack of printed cards or inscribed geometric solids, usually cubes. They can entertain themselves for hours, even days, with these simple devices and have created very complex and elaborate games with these simple devices. They will often congregate and engage in battle with one another with the goal of seizing money, food or other property from each other. On any human vessel, one of these battles can be found virtually at any hour. As far as more modern simulations go, their simulations are countless in number, variety, scope, and most importantly, difficulty. He paused once again and closed his eyes. The incredible assault team of theirs was not a military unit. It, it was exactly what they claimed it to be, just some of their crew who played together recreationally. Impossible, someone shouted. I wish you were correct, the game lord replied. I really do. However, I've been to Earth, their homeworld, while they don't have military gamers, they do have professional gaming teams that play in competitive leagues. They're professional teams. I... I've never seen anything like it. No race can stand against them. Hell, none of our units would even qualify for admission to one of their pro leagues. He chuckled ruefully. And as far as the simulations themselves go, he said, their A games are beyond belief in quality, complexity and difficulty. There is no galactic equivalent. Our most difficult trial would be easily mastered by one of their children, and the glorious ascendance, our biggest war, and our greatest victory, 
pales in comparison to the conflicts waging on any of millions of game servers in human space on any given evening, much less the weekend. Tears started to well in his eyes. What I have beheld, it, it's beautiful, the brilliance of their generals, the skill of their warriors, their training, their cohesion, they, he sighed, beautiful, they have no equal. They start playing games before they can be trusted to use a restroom unaided, and they don't stop until they die. Once they realize the importance of these games in our society, they will be able to field units that will be all but unstoppable. They will be able to take whatever they want whenever they want. What? What do we do? The Prime Decider stammered. The only thing we can do, the Game Lord replied with a grim smile. Git Gud! <laughs>